Good uh, morning or afternoon, everybody, uh, depending on where you're at. Uh, my name is Todd Seisner, editor of BassFan.com. Uh, today, uh, I want to thank you all for joining us for another installment in our Bass Day Ever series, um, in which a, a pro uh, angler was going to recall the most significant day or most impactful single day from their tournament careers. Uh, joining us today is going to be Mike McClellan, someone who's had many memorable days across his career. Mike's the winner of eight BASS events and currently an MLF angler fishing the Bass Pro Tour. Uh, Mike and his uh, ever-present iced tea are joining us from his home overlooking Table Rock Lake. Uh, Mike, how are we doing today? And uh, what have you been up to real quick before we dive into this? You know, actually, uh, we're doing really well today. It's a little bit chilly here again. I'm just hanging out here until I decide when I'm going to hit the lake. That's pretty much the common theme right now is uh, how long can I keep myself doing honeydews and, and uh, yard stuff before I actually go fishing every day. Right. And I, I know when we were trying to schedule this conversation, you, you would actually raise the possibility, hey, can I do this while I'm on the water? Um, which doesn't surprise me one bit, but I appreciate you uh, staying on solid ground for us here. But uh, so, Mike, I've, I've kind of explained to you the, the concept here, the project we're working on. I know we had a conversation in the boat a couple of years ago about this, um, this idea to uh, have you walk us through what for you is one of the most important days of your your tournament career we'll go back you know in the way back machine as i call it uh 2006 uh the grand lake elite series obviously the first year of the elite series grand lake your kind of backyard uh proving ground day two of that event um 25 pounds three ounces kind of set the tone and setting you on your way to winning that event take me back to that day and Maybe, you know, maybe let's go through that day and then expand on everything that was going on in your life kind of around, you know, fishing and why that particular day still stands out 14 years later now. And when you asked me, I think that day came to mind almost immediately mm -hmm. was simply the fact that that was the, uh, the first year of the Elite Series events. I, at that point in time as an angler, had come from having a year that I had actually taken off of the the pro tour the prior couple of years i fished the uh, invitationals but uh, coming into that uh, opening year of the elite series <clears throat> it was really on a shoestring um had very little sponsorship support i mean I, I had my partnerships but i really hadn't necessarily you know proven myself as an angler mm over the past three or four years and the elite series was kind of that opportunity to do so and leading up to grand i had had a couple of decent finishes but you know that's when the entry fees had had gone you know through the roof we were all in a new world and and a lot of anglers not just myself but a lot of anglers really had to depend on their tournament winnings right and, right. and i know i had credit cards that were nearly maxed out i had drawn a check or two. I had payments due, you know, to bass as well as, uh, you know, mortgage payments and the, and the whole bit. And, uh, coming into grand, you know, I, I felt really good about the event. It's, it's not a like, again, you know, so many people always tried to put grand Lake as being one of those lakes that I spent tons and tons of time on. It really wasn't that it was just simply the fact that it was a lake <clears throat> that I had spent some time on over the years. It was a lake that I felt really comfortable fishing. Mm -hmm. And it set up really, really well that year. Um, having 25 pounds on Grand Lake, I mean, there had been a few, you know, upper 20 pound stringers caught that year, yeah. but it really wasn't the norm. So to come in on day two with that kind of weight and open up the lead that I had at Grand, it really put me in a position where it built my confidence. It, it allowed me to uh, gain a lot of attention in the world of the Elite Series at that point. Mm -hmm. And it really, I feel like propelled my career to the next level. As anglers, we all recall weather conditions, uh, you know, and I think you said that you had a, a mixed bag those first couple of days. Uh, one day it stormed and the next day the wind picked up. Uh, situations where I was really dialed in to what I wanted to be doing that week. I, I mean, I had a great offshore bike going, <clears throat> catching them on a, a Carolina rig, a football jig, uh, mixing in, you know, a, a big, uh, big bite worm. A number of different things were playing into my favor. And the first day of the event, uh, we had just a horrible thunderstorm come through the area. 
Yeah. And of course, that was before the days of major league fishing. And and let's uh, you know cease cease fishing. Uh, right. Once you're out, you're out. And I remember that the wind came up. It was storming. I couldn't set on the stuff, you know, effectively. And and I made a decision, a, a calculated decision. Hadn't caught many fish at all on a crankbait during practice, but I felt like, you know, the fish had to be, you know, moving around. They weren't tied on the cover and, and picked up a crankbait and basically struggled through that first day and caught a pretty big, you know, pretty good bag. I think I had 18 or 20, maybe 20 pounds the first day. Yeah. And it was one of those situations that, uh, man, I just went fishing, covered water, fished a lot of the same stuff that I was going to fish, but I had to alter my, uh, mm -hmm. my plan for the day of attack. And, uh, you know, day two turned out to be a, a more traditional day on Grand. Typically, it's not uncommon. I mean, you don't fish very many days at Grand that the wind doesn't blow. It just right. it sets up in that area that it's going to blow. And, uh, you know, everything's set up right. The wind was there. And, uh, you know, I guess looking back on day two, I, I just had a great day. I remember calling numerous times. It seemed like I'd pull up on a spot and I might call once and, you know, catch one or two more just solid fish. And then it was like every one of the really good places that I fished, I caught a big one. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was getting to that point in the day where I felt like, man, I've got a good bag. I, I don't want to keep beating on them. You know, the lake is rough, the wind's blowing, there's boat traffic out. I want to make absolutely sure that I get back to weigh in on time. And, and I gave myself way too much time. I mean, I got back to weigh in and actually pulled up to check in mm -hmm. and looked down at my watch and I had like 35 minutes left. And I'm like, man, I can't check in this early. Right. So I wheeled around and, and ran across the lake just, uh, you know, on a, a whim. I remembered an old offshore rock pile hump that I had fished in, you know, many years before that uh, I had caught a good one or two on. And I pull up over there and, you know, pull out my football jig and I break like every bottom bait that I've got tied on off in a matter of, you know, the first 10 minutes I fish this place. Right. And I'm scrambling looking for rods and uh, all of a sudden I see this big, you know, 10, 12 inch gizzard shad come skipping out of the water, reached down, picked up a, a big crankbait, you know, mm -hmm. knowing that uh, there was something chasing that fish, launched it over there and, and hooked this massive fish, you know. And at first, you know, you question, is, is this really a bass? And right. uh, it came up and jumped pretty quick and, and made it evident it was a bass. And to end the day with a seven, I, it was a seven plus pound fish. I want to say it was seven, 10, seven, 12, something like that. Okay. Uh, I think it was a big bass of the event and to cap that day off with a coal like that I mean it pushed me up over the 25 pound mark and, and opened up the lead that I had I mean the lead and it gave me a lot of confidence and a, yeah. a lot of sense that you know this is my tournament to win if I just execute you follow that up with I think, 18 pounds on day three which gave you nearly a 12 pound lead heading into the final day and then I you know 14 and a half pounds you know sealed it up for you uh finished with 79 pounds, seven ounces to, to win that tournament. Um, you know, that wasn't actually your first significant win, Michael. Obviously, the, the previous fall, um, oh, another significant triumph for you is at the Open Championship. Take, take me through how these two, two events kind of tie together, the Open Championship leading to, you know, the Elite Series in, in 06. I guess the biggest thing there was uh... – the year that I qualified to fish the Open Championship, which would have been the 2005 Open Championship, mm -hmm. prior to that year, uh, you know, due to the accident uh, that my ex-wife and daughter were involved in uh, a couple years earlier, I had taken a year or two, kind of stepped away from the, the top 150s or the top 100s at that point in time, and I missed a complete season of fishing mm -hmm. On the circuit, I actually was a sales rep for a boat, co boat company, doing really good, uh, you know, making good money. Actually was considering, is fishing really what, you know, the, the good Lord has in, in mind for me at this point in time? Yeah. You know, I've never made the kind of money I was in a stable environment as a sales rep. And and then some things changed in the industry. Um, you know, that was back in the times of uh, some of the, the financial stuff was starting to happen. Some of the boat companies weren't selling boats as well. And I unfortunately lost my boat for my sales rep job. I mean, I actually ended up going to work for a marine dealership selling boats and ATVs and a number of things just to kind of keep things going while I fished the opens. Okay. And uh, really, you know, again, I had very little sponsorship. You know, I mean, some of the companies that I'd been with for years were, were still on board. They were still helping, but it was minimal, you know, because we weren't used to those high entry fees or anything yet. 
And I actually turned down my invitation to fish the Elite Series the fall before hmm. that Open Championship. So basically, I had told Bass that I wasn't coming to fish the Elites. Well, then when I went to the Open Championship, one of the carrots in that Open Championship was the fact that the winner of it qualified for the Classic, mm -hmm. as well as gained a berth into the Elite Series. <clears throat> so basically, by winning that Open Championship, I made the Classic for the following spring, which would be the 2006 Classic. Yep. Um, it gained me some bonus money from some of my contracts with my boat company and with my motor, with Mercury Marine and, and various things mm -hmm. that, that gave me a little bit of fund. You know, the fact that I was going to the classic, I knew I was guaranteed a, you know, a yeah. paycheck there. And it's like, okay, now I've got this additional invite to the elites. You know, what am I going to do? And, and in all honesty, my wife had seen how much happier I was fishing events rather than selling boats. Right. And she really was the push and, and very instrumental in the fact that, you know, hey, I'll do whatever it takes to take care of the boys, to put you back on the road if that's what is going to be the best thing for us as a family. And, uh, you know, that's where it all started. I went into that first year of the Elite Series with, again, you know, very little sponsorship. Uh, boat Company was behind me strong at that point. Uh, Mercury <laughs> winning Grand Lake, you know, going forward now, you know, yeah. the the Elite Series was a big deal. The entry fees were, you know, massive, and right. and we all had to have boat wraps and sponsorship opportunities started to change. Yep. And being a winner of that inception year of the Elite Series really allowed me to to break open some of those avenues. The credibility of winning, you know, an event, uh, a top level tour event like that, was a big deal, and uh, it really solidified, in my opinion. You know, looking back on day two of Grand Lake. Had I come in with, you know, another 18 pound bag, I'm just right there with the rest of the field. Right. But catching what I caught, giving myself that lead, that confidence that I needed to carry forward was a turning point in my career is the way I look at it now. There's, there's always things that I feel like God has put in my life to, to kind of continue to urge me down the path that I really feel like has been chosen for me. It was just kind of that solidifying fact that that, day really really made a difference in in my overall career you mentioned that crankbait fish at the end of the day do you still have that crankbait by chance you know i'm not that guy no if, you're not that guy okay say it. If, if, if it wasn't for you know probably my mom and dad yeah being somewhat the collectible type people i mean yeah. my dad actually uh, mom and dad are coming up again this week uh, to, to hang out with us uh and isolate here on table rock uh, they've got their rv that uh, they bring up and park uh Okay. outside of our house and hang out with us we fish and uh my dad actually showed up here uh the last time with the rod and reel that i won my first two bassmaster open events invitationals on back in 1996 i mean really? it was one of those rods that after you know that season he made me give to him and uh He's kept it all these years. So other than that one momentum, you know, so, or momentum of what uh Memento, yeah. just not that guy that keeps things, you know. Michael, that is really the, the the whole point of this whole series is just to kind of take you down memory lane, have you recall that specific day, take us through the day, and then expand on on kind of what it's meant and why it still sticks out to you today. And I think you've done a uh, a magnificent job of uh of illustrating it. And I can't thank you enough for doing this. And I, I won't I won't hold you up any longer because I know the fish are calling you. The so fish are calling. I'll, I'll cut you loose here. You know, hopefully a, a memorable day here is uh, in your future not too long. Absolutely, man. It's always good to join you, Todd. You did a great job for what you do. And uh, it's exciting that you've got this little series up and running. I hope to see a lot of it. All right. Appreciate it, Mike. Take you care. Bet, All right.